Hi, everyone. Welcome to Chew and Chats. Uh, this Friday, we have Assistant Commissioner Paula Hillman and Assistant Commissioner Amory Cagney joining us. So, uh, hi, both. Thank you for, for joining. So, we normally have uh, people joining us at their lunchtime break just to uh, hear out what's going on in the city and how uh, well, what we're doing in certain parts. But I want to also kind of branch out externally to talk about, in this case, um, policing in the city. We talked to Anne Graham previously about uh, transport in the city and how it will look like. So it would be great to hear about your a few points on policing in the city and what's going on and what's happening. So for those joining us for the first time, what normally happens is uh, the Q&A box at the bottom. Feel free to ask uh, questions you want and I will try to answer as many as possible. For those that aren't answered, um, please email um, us and we will get you an answer. So we can't answer uh, all the questions normally because sometimes it, there's a lot of them so uh this session is recorded your name will the first part of your name will be called out your, your surname won't uh so for our privacy protection purposes and if you have any questions as i said ask away and i'll kick off with uh assistant commissioner paula hillman first so paula and marie thank you both for joining us uh we normally kick off with a few minutes about yourself tell us what where you came from what you do uh, what you do now uh, and what are generally within your teams and uh, your briefs. By the way, can I just say it's actually incredible to see two uh, women leading in uh, the Gar on Garda Shikona. So it, it, it's great to have both of you here. And uh, I worked with you both this year on different things. And it's I've always found yourselves to be so responsive and so uh, straight with, with the answers. So Paula, first off with you. Yes, good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, it's great to be here. I'm uh, Paula Hillman. I'm uh, Assistant Commissioner for uh, Roads Placing and Community Engagement in Garda Shikona. So I have the, the national port portfolio. Uh, Anne Marie, who's with me, is in Chile, outline her own role, which is specifically for, for Dublin and for the city. But, but my role then is, is a national role. And I, I have responsibility for the uh, strategic partnership, um, policy development and delivery around four, four areas. Um, number one, that's roads policing. So that's the safety on our roads and working with the Road Safety Authority. Secondly, community engagement, and that involves um, the development and delivery of our community policing strategies, uh, our Guard Reserve strategy, hate crime and crime prevention. The third area of responsibility for is, is youth diversion uh, and the Youth Diversion Bureau with our uh, the, the really bespoke legislative framework we operate here in Ireland in relation to those young people who, who commit offences. And finally, then I've also the uh, lead for public order and events nationally. I, um, I've been a police officer now for 36 years, um, 35 years of those in uh, Northern Ireland and for the last year as, as a member of, of Angarda Shikona. I, uh, a bit about me, probably for myself, about very interested in terms of really police leadership, about coaching and mentoring and how we create those environments for our leaders, whether they're leaders in policing or leaders in the sector. I, I think all those those key skills of, of leadership that, that, that are right across many of our areas of work. The partnership working as well, which is key to, to delivering and, and creating safe communities because you know, the police cannot work in isolation in Garda Shikona, we cannot work in isolation and the partnership working that we do um, to, to work with others to, to promote safety uh, and ensure our communities are safe. And then finally, really diversity. And uh, while I already have the, the hate crime lead in a Garda Shikona, I, I did a lot of work in this previously as well. And not just diversity and, and engagement with our uh, communities and our, our diverse minority communities, but also within our organisation, how are we reflective of, of the communities so, <clears throat> that we place so um, diversity as well as my other um, really key interests. So that's um, a summary of, of myself, Lord Mark. Thank you so much, uh, Paula. Uh, yeah, myself and Paula worked on the National, the Garden National Diversity uh, Forum, which uh, her department said, I'll, I'll get to that with her in a bit, but it's been really eye-opening and it's actually been a great way of working for, like, we, we haven't had it before. So Amory, we'll come to you now. So. Tell us a bit about yourself. 
Afternoon, Deputy. I'm delighted to be here. That's my opening statement. Uh, absolutely delighted to have the opportunity. Uh, as you're aware, uh, Lord Mayor, I'm um, the um, Assistant Commissioner for the Dublin Metropolitan Region. I have a strategic and operational responsibility for all of Dublin. So all of the policing responses that happen in Dublin, I have responsibility for. And that comprises of seven card divisions, which includes our uh, Divisional Roads Policing Unit. Um, prior to that, I was a superintendent in the DMR East. Um, I have 32 years service in Angarda Siakana. Uh, policing is in my blood. My father was a policeman. And uh, I suppose what, what really enamoured me to join Angarda Siakana all those years ago was he was really committed to the community. And I thought, you know, this is, this is where I want to be. And as a result of that, I've spent my 32 years working mostly within the DMR and mostly working uh, with communities. And I suppose that's that's what I bring to my leadership role now in Dublin. Um, as I say, I was a chief superintendent in the DMR East. Um, and prior to that, I was a detective superintendent. And that was a very exciting time in my career because I was given national uh, portfolio. And one of the portfolios was to develop the national response for uh, victims of human trafficking, uh, victims of organised prostitution and also the development of policies and processes to support victims of crime generally. So that was a really good uh, stage in my career because I was able to influence uh, uh, legislative change and policy change and certainly to get uh, a greater sense of how we as an organisation can support the communities and support vulnerable victims and uh, victims of crime. And then most of my service before that, would you believe, was engaged in the detection and prevention of drugs. Um, I was an undercover drugs officer for many, many years in my service and worked in the likes of Ballyfermot, Blanchardstown, Clonokin, Kevin Street. So, you know, DMR policing is in my blood and I'm looking forward to today. I'm looking forward to the opportunity to have a discussion around my approach to policing in Dublin. Thank you both. Um, this is like, you have both have incredible CVs. <laughs> They're kind of looking at it going, oh, I always wondered how do you get to the assistant commissioner stage? And now you both explained it quite well through really hard work and uh, going into different roles in different areas. We've already had some questions in, but I, I kind of wanted to delve into some of the areas that you're working on first before I go right into the questions. So Paula, you talked about you talk about transport, we have some transport questions there, but you also talked about diversity. Like I, I, I was hoping you can give some insight to the audience um, about, um, about how the Guardi is looking at uh, hate crime, looking at how to approach diversity, how to support kind of migrants and community, because you have been, you and your de department have been really helpful in, in a lot of the work we're doing this year when it comes to integration and when it comes to diversity. So, and I just had a chat um, on, on radio about hate crime, about the new legislation. So a, a bit about how you're working and what you, what some of the stuff that y y your department have, or your section have been, have been rolling out. Well, it's really, thank you, Lord Murray. It's, it's two, two really key areas are of, of both then hate crime and then the, the engagement and integration piece as well, which they, they run parallel uh, uh, together. Firstly, in terms of, of hate crime, and it's in, we are aware and we have given our own re, um, feedback into the, the proposed new legislation. But even ahead of legislation, it's, it's how we have identified a definite an operational definition for hate crime, which is in line with many other international um, jurisdictions and best practice, which is um, based on the perception test that a, an offence happens, a base offence happens, and they are mostly criminal damage and, and assault. And actually then the offence is motivated by prejudice of one of our nine protected characteristics here, here in Ireland. So we're already doing the work around that in terms of communication, both internally and externally, training for our members, and externally engaging with the communities in terms of what a hate crime is. And then when you report it, to encourage reporting uh, of a hate crime, but when that is reported, then how we investigate it to the highest standard, how we uh, support the victim as well, uh, and, and throughout that, that criminal justice uh, process or throughout the investigative process. So the aspect of hate crime is really uh, uh, knowledge-based, enhancing our knowledge internally, and our response to reports of hate crime. Alongside that then is working with, with communities and those minority communities. And very much uh, as part of a neighbour for that, you've referenced it, we established a, uh, the, the, uh, the advisory group, the 
the, the diversity forum, the National Diversity Forum. Now, initially, the The diversity forum and that includes ethnic minorities lgbt age disability um and yourself now lord Murray, you attend that as well which is very welcomed but um initially the diversity forum were to act as uh, monitoring our uh performance of implementation of our diversity strategy but i, I think it's much wider than that and you and i we, we've discussed this it's very much a critical friend type role because you know, it's it's not, we can't sit in an ivory tower developing policies of what we think people need or what we think we need in policing. The only way we can really shape and make a difference is by listening to the voices of those people who are impacted by, by the, this area of crime. And we recognise, you know, that, that hate crime just doesn't have an impact on, on the victim themselves. And this is what makes hate crime different from other crimes, is that it has an impact in all members of the community that they represent or the community that they're from. Um, so the, the National Diversity Forum acts really now as a critical friend. We value the feedback that you give us. We, we reach out uh, as we develop things, identify, you know, at times we may not always get it right, uh, the opportunity to fix things and really help share our message. And our message about hate crime is clear. Um, it's not acceptable um, to stop it. Please report it. And we would encourage anyone um, to work with us um, uh, wherever you're from, to encourage people to report hate crime because it's only by reporting it uh, then that we can actively, not just in policing, but as a community, deal with these issues. I was actually really surprised, Paula, because I, I join a lot of meetings and boards and usually when it comes to the topic of uh, uh, kind of migrants or, or a diversity, a lot of times the boards don't have that representation. So it was re really interesting to see the forum when I joined on and I saw Shane O'Curry, who is the director of INAR, actually chair it, that, that the, the makeup of it was. I had Adrian from the uh, Interfaith Cultural Forum. I, uh, there was someone from Immigrant Council. So it is a wide mix like how like there, and Geraldine seems to be doing a lot when it comes to how we report things differently do you see things improving when it comes to um, um, when it, when the new hate crime legislation is in and when there's a new reporting system do you see it kind of being a case that things will improve or do you think things will get worse before it gets better type well hate crime is, is we recognize, and this is not just in Ireland, this is if we look at any international best practice uh, right across many other jurisdictions, we recognize that hate crime is an underreported crime. Um, hate crime is similar in a way, our approach to that of domestic abuse, where we welcome increased reporting. So increased reporting is in fact that people have the confidence to report it to Angarda Shikona. So that is what we'd be looking to see is actually in increased reporting because we know what's happening. What we're doing this year with, with the, the changes that, that I talked about, with the operational definition, with our training program to internally, and with the, new, the computer system, we've updated our computer, computer system, we're going to look at this year as a baseline of really getting an understanding of what is being reported and where, and then we will build on that baseline because we did recognise there were gaps in, in, internally within our own data of, of what we were recording and how. So this year for us is very much about getting that baseline. And then as we move forward, understanding where, 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 where these, the, the incidents are happening, because that's very much the role of the national units. You know, we have a country, uh, 280 Garda diversity officers. They, these are officers who have a portfolio role, many on, on community policing teams who work in their local divisions uh, to both support victims of hate crime, but carry out the local engagement. But our role nationally then is to see if we're having trends somewhere. And as we are recently, as we are doing with, with Anne-Marie and her, her teams in the DMR, do we need to give enhanced training anywhere? Do we need to come in and support people with extra training? Because my team, the Garda National Diversity and Integration Unit, uh, are responsible for the, the development and delivery of the training. And we've just been doing that in recent weeks as well um, in, in Dublin. Okay, there's a lot going on in the background because a lot of people kind of see things and just see what's happening in the front and they don't realize it, there is a lot. I think from yourselves, your, your relevant sections, there, there's been a lot happening in the last year. But talking of the last year, um, Commissioner, uh, Assistant Commissioner Cagney, Amory, like it, it's been challenging. It's been really awful, god awful for everyone. What, what are the kind of, um, we've heard a lot of the top line key challenges for Gardaí, but where, where is your team and how have you found the last year and what are the, some of the um, key things that you're coming out with from, from your area? 
Thanks, Lord Mayor. And I suppose, uh, you know, it has been a difficult year, but it not only has been a difficult year for policing generally, it's been a really difficult year for our communities. And I suppose what it does, and I'm going to talk about the positives first, if you don't mind, because the positives that I from the last year is we've got a real sense of community focus back into the organisation. And Paula understands where I'm coming from here, you know. We, I, I, I believe personally we got so tied up in, in, in addressing policing matters, we, we nearly forgot what it was like to take our time to engage with communities. And I always tell the story of, of, of my efforts over, over 32 years to try and remind my teams that, you know, to take that extra minute or two to talk to a person on the side of the street is, is, is really, really important. And, and it's important that they maintain that focus. So from a positive perspective, the last year has given us that sense of greater engagement with the communities, a greater sense that people our communities feel empowered to engage with Angarda Shikon. And I'll talk a little bit about some of the policing responses in, in areas such as domestic abuse. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about our increased empowerment and reporting in relation to drugs related intimidation. But that's all happening because we've got that sense of connect back with our communities. And that's something that I'd like to continue going forward. Uh, you know, some of the other challenges that for our members are, you know, it was it was a difficult year for them. And I suppose I would like to take this opportunity today to say that I'm very proud of our members in the DMR because I witnessed firsthand the long days they put in tremendous effort they put in and the commitment they put into supporting our policing response and they did it with two and a half hearts they were so supportive of getting people through this pandemic but it has taken its toll on them they're tired you know so as the restrictions ease I suppose they are looking forward to a little bit of breathing space so that they can you know get some sense of normality back in their own personal lives because I suppose we, we restricted their annual leave and we didn't allow, you know, so much leave to be taken so that there wouldn't be a policing response on the ground. But some of the challenges have increased reporting, as you're aware of, of domestic abuse. Um, and as you're aware, the organisation put in Operation Freeze of in response to that. So, again, that's a success story, if you could call it a success story. And I'm not saying uh, that we should have an increased reporting of domestic abuse. Nobody wants to see an increased reporting in that area. But the responses that have been put in place have been significant and have ensured the communities that notwithstanding any of the regulations and the restrictions that are in place, that we are there for the community. And if you are a victim of domestic abuse, the restrictions and the regulations don't apply. You can leave your home can and report. You tell us, are you allowed to tell us a bit of, or, or, of their, um, what has happened in terms of uh, uh, the supports in place for, for domestic violence? Thanks, Lord Mayor, and I'd be delighted to because I really want the message to go out there in terms of all of the good work that's been done in Dublin. So as you're aware, and I spoke to it briefly in my introduction, when I started in the detective superintendent role, I was tasked by the commissioner at the time with establishing the Garda National Protective Services Bureau. So that was the national bureau that was tasked with uh, supporting victims of vulnerable crimes to include the crimes of domestic abuse. Um, and what we did then was we uh, developed a divisional protective service unit in Asian in the Dublin metropolitan region. So there are dedicated personnel within Dublin who are trained to a very high level to provide a professional and consistent approach to victims of sexual abuse, domestic abuse, and all of the crimes that impact on them to include uh, human trafficking and organized prostitution. So not only then did we stop there, but in terms of domestic abuse, we, we decided to go one step further. So because I was fortunate enough to still maintain my contacts at that national level, we engaged with the Detective Chief Superintendent in the Protective Services Bureau. And what we did was we piloted a bespoke risk assessment tool for victims of domestic abuse in one of our divisions in the DMR. So over the last year, we've been using that bespoke tool and we've been conducting an assessment of its successes or otherwise, and that's informing a national rollout, which will provide additional supports and it'll, it'll mitigate any risks to victims and families impacted by domestic abuse. And then we decided to go one step further in Dublin. What we did was we felt, and again, it's based on my own experience, we had victims of domestic abuse and families impacted by domestic abuse really lacking in knowledge around what happens. 
So what happens after you report domestic abuse or what happens if I decide to engage in the courts process? To allay any concerns in that area, what I've done is I've established domestic abuse coordination teams in some of the Garda divisions in the DMR, and they will be extended to the six of the divisions. But the role of that team is to provide a liaison person to families and victims of domestic abuse. And they will be given the full knowledge base around the next steps as part of that criminal justice process. And even if they don't engage in the criminal justice process, the next steps of available support, such as victim support or any other supports that are available in the community to assist them. That's good to know because like, I, I think this is part of the problem when, when you're in that position, you're, you're terrified. You're terrified as it is. And it, it's good to know that, well, people are, are too scared of calling the guards. They don't know what will happen. So it, it's good to have an outline of, well, what are the supports in place? So, and uh, in fairness, I was talking to Superintendent uh, Finbar who uh, talked about coercive control and, and was um, uh, and was doing a lot of great work in that. So I have to say, it, it's, it's good to see. Um, I have some questions here. There's only four so far. <laughs> That's not bad. So uh, usually there's a lot. So uh, Paula, we have Niall who says, uh, roads policing in the city has completely failed. And then we have Fei Jin who is asking about cameras and enforcements of bus lanes. You and I have talked about this. We, we've talked about kind of uh, traffic now. Traffic hasn't gone back to its capacity in the, in the city and I really hope it doesn't. But when it, if it does, like what, what are we talking about when it comes to roads policing? How, what could, how can it be different from pre, pre-COVID? Like what do we see when it comes to like illegal parking? And because I see it every day from Twitter to actual like out there that people are blocking lanes or on footpaths and then like what's the enforcement? What are you thinking when it comes to uh, Angorda, Sheikana uh, and uh, the enforcement side of uh, road policing? Yeah, and, and, and certainly we're addressing that question as well. Hopefully, again, I, I will be talking to you this about the nationally, what we will be doing nationally, the actual delivery of rules policing uh, and the operational delivery within Dublin rests with, with Anne-Marie. But in terms of the work that we are doing um, across um, across the country uh, and for our policies and partnership working with the Road Safety Authority, uh, and we just this week um, did a campaign as well for road users about, yes, the country is opening up again as we move out of, of the, the level five restriction. And I think we, what we are seeing um, in cities um, is, is a more sense of that shared space. So, you know, our message is to all road users is actually to be considerate of each other. And I don't think, I, I you know, without... Uh, highlighting uh, one road user over another, we all have a shared responsibility of of paying uh, attention on our roads, of of not being distracted by devices. Um, uh, well, while we're, we're, we're whether we're driving, cycling, walking as well, shared responsibility because we are starting to see that that shared space uh, as well. You know, our, our enforcement activities continue. We we are monitored. Um, on those activities um, through the policing authority meetings. But uh, what I would say is we're very much looking, and I saw one of the other questions as well, is what is really looking, and we have some groups set up, which I really welcome, and, and the question as well, it, it is how also do we use technology? Because with the greatest will in the world, we cannot have a Garda member at every corner of every street, either in terms of the illegal parking or the bus lanes or, or lights. So we are looking collectively with the, the relevant partners within road safety uh, about you know how we can develop that technology as well. Uh, so Stephen the, actually oh, said is there room to have a website or someone that have people contributing uh, have your public contributing to 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 that kind of data and evidence uh, of, of picturing them so that it's not just the guards having to, to monitor everything. Is there like is there scope? Well, I mean, that's something. But again, I would look at it's wider than the guards as well. You know, we have local councils, um, traffic wardens, and also the technology, which actually changes behaviours, getting us into the preventative space rather than the enforcement space. Because if people know they're going to be detected, then they won't do it. You know, you can go to other cities. I go to my home city. I know when um, I haven't been able to get there a lot recently. But, you know, you know, I know by driving the bus lane, I'll get a ticket. You know, so how, how do we get into that that space of the prevent how, that, that we know that there, there are consequences? And, and it's again, because road safety enforcement, we will undoubtedly play our part as in Garda Shikona, but there's also technology, but there's also 
how we work to prevent that. So you know, when we look at even average speed cameras, how they change behaviours on roads um, uh, as, as well. So we're looking at all of that and we're very much involved and in working in partnership with the Road Safety Authority in, in terms of the new t- next um, nine year to 10 year road safety strategy for Ireland, which is, is vision zero, how, how we can uh, you know, reduce the, the deaths and serious injuries on our roads. Um, but, but certainly, I mean, that, that is something, uh, again, we would need, you'd need to look at the detail of that. How is it monitored? If it's not being looked at live time, how do you, how, how do you deal with that? If some of that idea that someone has, has come up with, with um, you sending um, pictures in and things like that. Okay. Okay. Well, good to see you're open to it. Uh, Anne-Marie, like you, you talked about how your previous experience was uh, a detective working in in a uh, 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 drugs area, and um, I'm I'm I have a question there in relation to um, I guess Dublin uh, as it uh, well it. There's no name to it, but there is there a long term strategy for Merchant Key and Woodkey? But I guess I want to expand that question of is that what is the drug strategy and, and in terms of uh, on Garda Shilkana, um tackling? Because like, I, there, there was recently a talk on several on several places in Dublin in relation to kind of uh, increase in drug um, activity. And one of the um, one of the reasons of closing down the Portobello Plaza this weekend was again that. But I don't want. I don't think we should be closing public realm spaces, and I want to prevent that. So, what is, however, the tackling of the? Uh, what is the drug strategy for for yourselves, and how do we see um, COVID has affected it, and what do we what 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 do we see uh, changing in in that area in the next while? Thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, but particularly is important in relation to the drug strategy. From a national perspective, we have uh, Operation Tara, which will be formally launched uh, in June. However, it's in existence currently because what we have done is we have established uh, drugs units in each of the Garda divisions. And again, they are minimum strength drugs units. So they can't be below a specific strength because there is a significant focus on drug prevention and detection as part of our strategic approach. Notwithstanding the policing operations that we have in place in various areas within the city, and they're the operational policing uh, plans that are in place for the likes of around Merchants Quay and various other areas within the city. I'm not going to call out any specific areas because it's important that we understand that this isn't just confined to one area within Dublin City. Indeed, it's a national issue and that's that national approach is going to be particularly important. Um, during, during the last year, we've had significant uh, positive uh, responses uh, to the uh, drugs operations, the national operations specifically, but Dublin in particular, we had significant amounts of drugs over the last year. But what's really, really relevant is we're now beginning to see significant amounts of cash as well. So that's a lot of money going back into the exchequer for use for other other uh, means. Um, and even if I look this week alone, Lord Mayor, and if I look at the last 24 hours in Dublin, in one seizure alone, we have 300,000 euros worth of drugs seized overnight. And that's one of four significant drug seizures that we have in Dublin. So there's great work going on in the area of the detection as well as the prevention space. But what I would like the opportunity just to reassure um, our attendees about is we also have focused on the harm that arise as a result of drugs related activities. So drugs intimidation, as you know, is an issue and it's a significant cause of harm to our communities. So in the city, I'm not prepared to allow that happen. So what I've done is I've put in a strategic response in, in Dublin specifically to deal with drugs related intimidation. And that's under the ambit of what I call Operation Fogre. What that will do is that will feed into our obligations under the national drug strategy. But what it will do for our communities, it will provide that high level approach that we will do in consultation with our colleagues in the Organised and Serious Crime Bureaus. So that's looking at the OCG, the organised crime element of what's behind the supply of drugs into Dublin. We're also looking at engaging with our communities, having key people on the ground and making sure that we're working with our partners in the community to encourage and empower people to report. And again, I'd like to bring it back to when I started my work in the area of domestic abuse. That was one of the areas we focused on is how do you empower people to report to you as an organization? And how you do that is by gaining their trust and you gain their trust through that community engagement piece and making sure that our key partners are selling that message on our behalf 
So believe it or not, at this stage, we already have increased reporting in relation to drugs related intimidation. But then if I take you on to the additional strand that I have placed in relation to that operation. So to ensure successful prosecutions, we have assigned senior investigating officers in each Garda division to investigate and coordinate all incidents of drugs related intimidation to such an extent that they have to establish what we call a, a serious incident um, and a jobs book related to that investigation. And what we do is then we've brought it one strand further in the sense that we're using our analyst service so that if there is drugs related intimidation, that we're identifying all of the strands and making sure that coordinated because we all know that it's not confined to one division. It could be happening in one division and emanating in another or it could be going down to a third or fourth division. So it's that coordinated and consistent approach uh, that we have taken. And just to reassure you again, that's not a strategy that's going away anytime soon. That's a long-term vision for me. And my vision is that at some stage in the not too distant future, we will have all of our communities understanding what supports are in place by Angarda Siakana in relation to families and persons impacted by drugs. Thanks, Amory. Uh, there's a question from Alan and someone else about, Kieran about uh, rising antisocial behaviour. I, I know the uh, poem was about you crime, but I think it's more than you. I, I don't I, I, I don't like particularly saying it's you because I don't think it is. I, I don't actually uh, think we should be blaming uh, young people for, for this, but is there, like, do you both of yourselves see, there has there been a rise? Is are, are, are there certain issues in place that you think we you're, you're looking at more now than like I'm not going to go into statistics but like true COVID because of how people have, have been inside now they're going outside like what do we see in terms of policing plans for future when it comes to uh, um, nationally in Dublin I don't know is that Paula or uh, yourself Amory? no no problem at all I, I'll take that and then maybe Paula might like to come in in terms of the young people but but I do want to reassure you that um the data will say that public order has decreased during the course of COVID, but I'll, I'll leave it at that for the purposes of explaining that I am intending uh, that as the city, not that I'm intending, but I am foreseeing that as the city uh, reopens, that we will see an increase in public order. And again, some of the challenges for us at the moment, which you're all aware of, are the increased uh, groups gathering for the purposes of, of uh, being outdoors at weekends. So that is causing us a particular challenge, but it isn't, it's not confined to young people. In fact, you know, young people throughout the pandemic have been very, very good. And I think it's important to put that out because, you know, when you engage with them and we've used the three E's approach, as you know, as our organizational response, and we've only used the 40 of the um, enforcement piece, you know, on a limited number of occasions. But young people in particular are very good when you talk to them, when you educate them and when you explain how their behavior is impacting on communities. And in the majority of occasions, they're moving on. I know we had a significant incident recently, which I won't go into the detail of in one of our transport authorities uh, stations. But again, we've made people amenable for that, as you know. But even in that engagement piece with those young persons, you know, you know, they'll be engaging with Paula's team and whatever the criminal justice response place will be, it'll be part of a learning for them as well. You know, so it's particularly important that we have a significant policing presence for this additional crowd capacity that we foresee to be uh, emanating as a result of the lifting of restrictions. But I do think it's important that um, we, we, we really, really commit to supporting the reopening of our business communities because, you know, we're trying to get back to normal in society and we as an organisation will try and support that as best we can. So just to reassure um, the community, uh, we have a particular operation in place, particularly this weekend, because I want to see what the impacts of the closure of certain areas are. I have an ability for my teams to report on a daily basis in terms of how well or not that's going. We have an increased uh, policing presence on the ground in the city centre for this weekend. So I think it's important to let that little bit of reassurance be out there. I'm not sure if Paula would like to come in in terms of the young person's yeah, I, I'll move on to you, Paula, but I think you've answered Alan's question there of the antisocial behaviour and how it will move think, think people down towards other areas. So it's good to hear that there's an a increase in, the, uh, in in policing on the areas. Um, Paula, I like again, I, I think I completely agree with Amory in saying that young people get a lot of flack for a lot of things that happen. They, they just do. And in a lot of cases, 
uh, we, we do have a youth strategy in place as well. Like, is it, is it working and how have you been, what, what do you think needs to be improved, but also in the general uh, sense of youth, because you yourselves are also had a uh, youth awards recently in relation uh, in from on Garda Shields or Connor. Like, how have you been seeing this action and what do you find um, we, we can do better? Yeah, certainly yes, and and we saw last year's youth awards, and and I'm actually leading on on the this year's developing this year's uh, youth awards. Um, uh, um, we we are looking forward to to reaching out and, and hearing all those stories uh, of, of, of all the, the great work that that young people have done. No, yes, I have responsibility for the youth bureau, and just briefly, um, I, I think that. You know, as already been covered by Anne Marie, you know, COVID has impacted on everyone. So, all in different ways. It, it doesn't matter what age group you're in, uh, what community you're from. COVID has impacted on all of us. And I think, you know, for our young people, um, and I get the impact of, of not being at, at school and you know, not seeing older relatives and, and things like that. But in terms of the Youth Diversion Bureau, you know, we have a bureau now that is there was some learning. Some things happened a few years ago, um, and. Uh, uh, improvements were identified. Uh, we have that bureau resource now with the people that we need. We have they they operate within our legislative framework. You know, with that the, the Children's Act is is, is uh, uh, specific to, to here in Ireland and how our young people once if they have committed an offence, how they're considered to be dealt with um, within within the, the, that legislation, uh, or else uh, if they meet the criteria. So it is something that. I, I feel is working. We have the governance, the oversight of that. But I would also say that in, in the preventative uh, arena to that, you know, there's great work being done by our juvenile liaison officers out across all our divisions and also by all those, those youth projects that are in place. Uh, and I know that many of those uh, youth project leaders, you know, they, they adapted, they started holding events online and all the work people did have to get us through the, the challenging year that, that that we're in and I think that's something that that we can that we can build on going forward it is something I have actually been thinking about and, and I think there is something about the voice of young people and how do we hear that you know we have other engagement um uh forums right across uh placing right across on Garda Shikona but many of them are adult voices so it is something that I have been thinking about and looking at considering options about how do we engage uh, in that more formal way with our young people. And I do think there's something we could look at there, Lord Mayor. Well, it's also like uh, we, we spoke about it, that um, the community officers, especially the, the ones that are really embedded in the communities, work really well with young people. Like I, I constantly think of Ian Lamb, I think his name is, from uh, th th that's in Dublin 8. And like every, because I used to work up in the brewery there, and every young person seems to know him. So, and, and like, whether that's good or bad, I wasn't sure. But like, but then he had a really good relationship with them. And same as when I went down to St. Andrew's Resource Centre, the community officers that came down to the, the, that day when I was there, uh, like the, the kids there, the young people there just loved them. Like they, they had a really good rapport. So is it the case that it's more community officer focus to, to tie in with the youths in the community as uh, as part of kind of um, make forming that relationship Paula? Well yeah I mean we, we do and I mean and Garda Shikana have a great we have a great schools program which is part again of of our, our community engagement so we have a well-established schools program um, you know in the year 2019 before COVID, we were out and had an outreach into over two and a half thousand schools right across the country. So it is all about building those relationships at that younger level uh, with, with your local guard. And, and we see it works. You know, it's one of the things certainly having come down Garda Shikona within over just over a year ago, it, it is something that I think makes this organization. And uh, the organisation it is, and you see that that very local relationship with the local guardie out in the ground, and it's something that we welcome. It's something that Amory has referenced. We built on it during COVID. I mean, we re our community engagement police. Uh, um, part of our strategy, we got our community engagement cars, which people have seen out now with the 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 Angarda corner crest on it, but uh, used solely by community policing um, guardie. So it's how we use our community guards. Um, in Dublin, uh, especially in those, those city areas, uh, but also right across um, placing to engage with young people, with everyone, those who are vulnerable, but in terms of young people, uh, the schools pro and, and really build on that. And I think I think we have a really good, you know, as, as placing goes, I think it was a really good structure there to build on. 
Thank you. Um, Lubu uh, disagrees with us on our statement about young people listening and adjust their behavior. This is really not the case uh, with certain areas of city with long term uh, ongoing antisocial behavior. And, and that's it, that like Lubo, like there, I, I'm not, I'm not um, uh, playing down your claim. I, I fully understand where antisocial behavior is, but I, I I'm engaged with a child protection social worker and I, I, I just I completely agree with Amory and Bola on, on the statements about young people uh, listening and, and checking behaviors mainly because a lot of times it is because they come from circumstances that they don't feel like that they have any other outlet and I'm not defending them for the sake of defending them I just think that they get way too much flack so they, they get a lot of flack for and very little credit half the time um, uh, we normally like ending on uh, a light question or a um, contentious one sometimes and since we're wrapping up here I have the question of from Cormac asking about uh, would the Gardaí ever allow uh, brackets tolerate cannabis cafes as pro, pro uh, prohibition has clearly failed and is doing social damage keeping in control of criminal gangs so what is your opinion on on uh on cannabis cafes and right paula gets asked this in a second too so i don't she doesn't okay okay well do you know lord Mayor, i'm not going to offer an opinion if you don't mind i just want to I just want to stay neutral on this because i can't offer an opinion because i haven't done enough research personally to provide an opinion today but what i will say is that you know just to reassure the preventative responses are equally as important as the uh, detections in these spaces so you know it's something i'm going to look at based on the question and i certainly you know may be better informed to to provide an opinion on that in due course this just means we have to get you a ticket to amsterdam and then you come back and, and let us know paula uh, <laughs> any thoughts so or rather not so I, I'm going to give the yeah the, the diplomatic answer. Was it Cormac? Was it Cormac asked the question? Cormac was asking it. Cormac, yeah, yeah Cormac. Uh, we we operate within the legislative framework uh, that the legislators develop. So really, I think this is one for the legislators. We will enforce the law in terms of how it's been uh, designed for the for the country. So I'll leave that one to the leg legislators. Well, well, I, Cormac, you, you know my response. I like the Green Party has always pushed for for legalizing it. Well, I worked in MS Ireland, and I, I saw a lot of uh, patients going through that I could have definitely done with it. I know there's medicinal, but still, there, there's a whole conversation and debate there, folks. Thank you so much, and uh, Assistant Commissioner uh, Amory Cagney and uh, Assistant Commissioner Paula Hillman, you're both being uh, stars, and thank you so much. And it's great again to see women in, in these leadership roles, and it sounds like you're doing a lot for the city. So anyone that um, I didn't ask um, the questions of, please email us in at lordmayor at dublincity.ie, and we will get it answered. But uh, thank you once again. See you guys. Thank, thank you. you.